Welcome to this Weiss Academy online lesson on nerve impulses. This lesson covers Unit 3, Central and Peripheral Nervous System, Point 5. Today we'll cover the structure of a nerve and what a nerve impulse actually is. We'll follow its path starting with impulse generation, how it travels along a nerve, and finally cover how the impulse is transferred across a synapse. So let's quickly review the structure of a nerve cell. Remember that a nerve cell has three main parts, the dendrites, the cell body, and the axon. Nerve impulses are what your body uses to communicate between these nerve cells. A nerve impulse is essentially an electrical charge known as an action potential. This action potential can move along and between nerve cells. There is a difference in charge between the inside and outside of a neuron, similar to a concentration gradient, but with charge instead. We can also talk about this difference in terms of polarity. The more different the inside and outside are, the more polar. Your neurons can pump charged ions in and out of themselves to change the charge difference, so they are using electrochemistry to send signals throughout your body. We can look at an action potential on a graph of voltage at a certain point on the neuron versus time. The graph will have this shape. Let's discuss each part of the graph, what it's showing us, and what is occurring in the body at that point. So the first thing that happens to cause an action potential is the stimulus. This is any event that a neuron is designed to respond to. The stimulus occurs here on the graph. It occurs when the dendrites of a nerve cell catch certain chemicals, called neurotransmitters, that other neurons send to them through a gap called a synapse. These neurotransmitters act like little keys, unlocking a bunch of channels that charged ions can pass in or out of. So what are these charged ions, and what do they have to do with it? Remember that ions are just chemical atoms that happen to have a positive or negative charge. This charge is how the neuron converts the chemical signal of neurotransmitters to the electrical signal of an action potential. Generally, there are lots of positive sodium, negative chloride, and positive calcium ions on the outside of a neuron, and lots of positive potassium ion and some other negatively charged ions on the inside. The inside of the neuron tends to hang out at around negative 65 millivolts, which we can see here on the graph. If enough ions of a particular charge are moved into or out of a dendrite, then the net charge of the dendrite will change. If the change is big enough, it will cause the action potential to begin. When this big change occurs, it starts a domino effect that pushes the action potential all the way through to the end of the neuron. Let's take a change towards the positive as an example. The first thing it does is to open lots of positively charged sodium ion channels at the start of the axon. These channels are called voltage-gated because they only open when a certain voltage is reached. Positively charged sodium ions come rushing in, which changes the voltage to trigger the next channels along to open. This is where the dominoes start. So now the cell is getting really positively charged, and we can see that here on the graph. We call this depolarization because the cell is becoming more similar to its outside environment, and therefore less polar. But hang on a second. How does the charge come back down again here? Interestingly, the voltage-gated sodium channels don't actually close. Instead, another part of the channel, called the inactivation gate, covers up the opening, like blocking a door with a box instead of actually shutting it. This happens really soon after the channels open. There are other types of channels around the sodium channels as well. These ones are also voltage-gated, but instead of letting sodium in, they let potassium out. These guys are a bit slow, so they kind of miss the mark and only open up after the sodium channels have been blocked. This means that lots of positive potassium can come out of the cell, and the charge can go back down again. This is called repolarization, because the charges inside and outside are getting more different again. This dip here in the graph happens when the sodium channels shut. The potassium channels, who are the slow guys here, still haven't figured it out and are staying open to let potassium out. Classic. That's why the charge suddenly becomes more negative than it was originally. Then the potassium channels figure it out, close, and everything returns to normal. This is a chain reaction that moves down the axon. When it reaches the end of the axon, the neuron releases more neurotransmitter, which travels through a synapse then the whole process can begin again. All right, that's it for our content for today. Today we covered 
Nerve impulses are action potentials, which are differences between the charge of the inside and outside of a neuron that travel down the axon. Action potentials travel between neurons using neurotransmitters. That's all for today's lesson on nerve impulses. Next time, we'll talk about the endocrine system versus the nervous system. Thanks, guys, and see you next lesson.